So you've removed your GL1500 carburetor, you've rebuilt your GL1500 carburetor, and now it is time to reinstall your Honda Goldwing GL1500 carburetor. Let's go ahead and let's show you how to do it. Hey guys, Octane Restorations, and we are back with a GL1500 tutorial. Today we'll be going over the installation of the carburetor. So, just a few tools that you might need for this. Uh, you will need a socket set. If you have one, that's fine. This is just the cheapest one I could find from Harbor Freight. Uh, this screwdriver from Harbor Freight, little 90 degree ratcheting screwdriver. You don't have to have it, but it makes it easier and it's like three bucks. Next is a set of JIS screwdrivers. These are very important. And then a long screwdriver. A, I couldn't find a long JIS, so I had to go with the Phillips too. But you will also need one of those. Also, long needle nose pliers, preferably ones with different ends. So as you see, you can get a three pack or a five pack. That's what I have and they are invaluable. This is those screwdrivers I was talking about. They don't have to be 22 inches long, but they need to be decently long to tighten the carburetor boot screws. And then just a little grease. You can use spray WD-40 if you have it. It would work just fine. Also, you're gonna need one of these uh, that you'll be installing. <laughs> and you'll need a motorcycle to install it too, so it's probably two of the most important things. So this one I've recently rebuilt and cleaned the whole nine yards. So we're getting ready to install it. If you are not at this point, you still need to remove and clean it. Check out the other videos. I got tutorials on those as well. First, you're gonna clean the area that you're installing this. I'm using a shop vac. If this was my motorcycle, I would have taken the time to completely detail it, but it was for a customer. So we just cleaned out the big debris, stuff that I was afraid that might get into the engine or hinder the installation progress. But we got it all shop backed out. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the carburetor put on. A few things about it is you should have loosened the boots to take the carburetor off with that long Phillips head screwdriver. I like to go ahead and put a rubber boot on if it came off. So that way both of the rubber boots for the carburetor are on right there. And then I sprayed a little bit of grease in each of the rubber boots to help facilitate the setting of it. There is a few things you can do before you actually seat the boots as you should. Like right now I'm doing the throttle, the throttle cables. They're just a huge pain to do. They're impossible to do with it seated. So you wanna go ahead and knock out the throttle cables. After throttle cables, if yours has cruise control, so it's like an SE or an Aspen Gade, then you're going to want to do the actuator cable on the back, which is this right here. This controls cruise control, and whenever we did the disassembly on my tutorial, we just undid those two Phillips with that 90 degree ratcheting screwdriver. To me, that was the easiest way. So that's what I recommend, and that's what I'm doing right here. Now I'm just tightening it with that 90 degree ratcheting screwdriver. You just put the cable back in the cable holder and then redo the two JIS screws. So in my opinion, that's the easiest way to do it. Also in the back here, we do have a choke cable that is going to need to be put in as well. And then we got those hoses that you see near the bottom of the screen, the ones with the white lines. Also, don't forget to install your fuel lines. You might need those. <laughs> Those are going to be on the side of the fuel filter and the gas cap, so towards the rear of the motorcycle. You know, you should have taken them off <laughs> to get to this point, so you should see how to reassemble them, but just remember to install those. Normally there's two of them that connect to a T, and then you just connect your fuel line to that T. Just depends on the configuration and the year of your motorcycle. Really long time now, since you've been around. 
Here we are working on the choke cable. These curved needle nose pliers really come in handy right here. Able to get in there. But all in all the choke cable is pretty easy to install. It's probably the easiest cable out of all of them. There is a little bracket on the back of this that holds the choke cable in place, which is a JAS also. So you do got to remember to replace that. Also, there are two antifreeze lines that come into the carburetor on the bottom from the radiator. So you do got to remember to install those. I like to use these curved needle nose pliers and be very, very careful to get these back on without puncturing the hose. But the curved needle nose pliers I found are what easiest. And then you just press and press and press till it seats. But hopefully with the lubrication you added, it should go smooth. The video cut off, but there are two screws that you need to tighten underneath the carburetor, which are the carburetor boot screws. That's what you use the long Phillips for. It's easiest to come at a 90 degree angle to the fairings. So just the video cut off, but don't forget to tighten those. They're <laughs> pretty important. Next, we have these hoses. These are going to go to the bottom of the airbox. These are a pain in the butt. Holy cow. That top one that my finger's on right there, that's going to be the easiest one to get on first. But if this is your first time doing it, I'd plan spending 30 minutes trying to get these stupid hoses on all at the same time. <laughs> so I generally do the frontmost hose, and then I do the other two, but this is where those pliers come in handy. You know, there's those ones on the circle end, that I showed you on that picture and those were a vital part of putting this back together. You can use the 90 degree or the 45 degree but I like to keep all of them handy <laughs> and just you know use whichever ones are working. But again the circle one I found was the best to put in that hose to the front most of the motorcycle and then the order was I installed the front hose and then the back two after that. There is a hose clamp on there. If you can get the hose and the hose clamp on, it'll make your life way easier. Next, you just got six JIS screws to tighten this air box back down. Decided my day was going too well, so I lost a bolt on purpose, so I could go fishing for it. Me personally, I would much rather be fishing for fish instead of bolts, but we found it. Those are the screws that hold the top of the airbox on. This one has like a KNN style air filter, one that you can re-oil and wash and clean, everything like that. So. It's still good. The rubber gaskets that go on the outer edge of the airbox are kind of iffy. But as you see, I preloaded it in the top right there, held it pretty tight, and then put it in. On this motorcycle, the way this gasket had been bent, I just found this was the easiest way. I will mention this motorcycle's for a customer. So if it was my motorcycle, while you've already got all the fairings and everything off, I would go ahead and take some time to clean this area. Be careful with water. You know, you don't want to force water into anything. But I did blow it off with a leaf blower just to get some of that major dirt out. And as you saw in the beginning, I also vacuumed out where we were going to install the carburetor. So just tighten these bolts. I think there's six to eight of them. The 1988s have a, and maybe the 89s, have a metal overflow hose that is on the back of the, like where the screwdriver is now. So just remember to install that metal pipe. But now we've got the carb on, we've got the airbox on, connect all the fuel lines, throttle linkages, cruise control cable, choke cable, etc., etc., etc. So it's just time to get the fairings on. Now 
Now at this point, all you're going to be doing is replacing all of the fairings in the correct order. It's just a exact reversal of the removal. Should have three screws that hold this one together and then that little divot on the bottom. Then you have plastic covers to hide the screws, little screw covers. Then you got your trim pieces and there's another JIS screw that actually screws into that trim piece. But I'll let you watch this, I don't think there's any point of going over every exact screw placement. Because y'all y'all done this. You would have disassembled to this time. Hopefully, whenever you disassembled, you took pictures and took videos. Especially if it's your first few times doing it. Like I said, I completely record everything I do. Now remember, there is a screw on the inside that you got to install before you can put that side cover fairing on that I was messing with right there. And this side, if you do have an Aspen Kate or an SC, then you have a reverse switch. So again, don't forget those, but otherwise I'll shut up and just let you watch me install some bolts and screws. One thing to consider before you get all this stuff put back on, if it's been a while you might change your fuel filter. It's right there, it's pretty easy accessible. But if you don't plan on doing it, then you just gotta put this piece on, along with the two covers that go near the steering stem, and then the seat. Normally your bolts will be an Allen head, but the bolts holding the seat to this motorcycle were lost. <laughs> so I got a screw with the right thread pitch and everything like that, right length, but it's a 13 millimeter socket. So it makes it a little harder because that rubber likes to catch on that metal, but we're just making do with what we got. But yours should be an Allen. Well, that's all there is to it. We've taken the carburetor off, we've disassembled it, we've cleaned it, and then we've reassembled it, and we've installed it. So, again, this is Octane Restorations. Thanks for watching this GL1500 tutorial, and you have a good rest of your day.